Today, you're about to get access to Young Thug's exact recording template. No cap, no kizzy, no kizzy, no cap. And if you're in Pro Tools, I've also included a free Pro Tools template download right down in the description to save you a little bit of time. But let's go ahead and break down this template and see what you're about to get access to. Let's go. Real quick, I gotta explain how I actually created this template. So shout out to Baines. A Young Thugs recording and mix engineer, one of the hottest, if not the hottest, uh, audio engineers in the game. So definitely shout out to Baines for doing multiple interviews over these last few months. But I specifically pieced this together by watching a few different interviews to ensure that this was as close, if not identical, to Baines and Young Thugs actual Pro Tools recording template. So there's a few specific interviews that I watched and got this from, um, but I got a shout out to Avid who just recently at the time of shooting this video just did a recently did an interview with uh, with Baines kind of break it down his recording and mix template definitely got a shout out to my man Matt Rad as well man he's been shooting tons of different interviews with top tier audio engineers within the industry and definitely got a shout out to Townsend Labs as well as uh, they interview Baines about some uh, recording techniques and stuff like that. If you want to watch the entire video and this is something that you know you want to learn a little bit in depth about, about his, his mindset and stuff like that, I'll definitely drop those in the description down below. But let's go ahead and dive into this template breakdown and exactly what's happening within our template. So the way that I'm going to break it down real quick is I'm going to kind of show you the skeleton of this template so you know exactly what's going on so it's not, you know, chaos. What he has uh, here is he typically has some kind of master bus, a uh, mix bus. The next thing that he typically has is uh, his beat track and then his edited beat. So obviously this is where your beat's going to live. Uh, now what's going to be happening here within the edited beat, so say he wants uh, this part of the beat to be filtered. So, you know, that's kind of what that's going to look like. It's su super quick. So he can literally do that while he's recording and, you know, say, hey, like I want to filter out this part of the beat. That's what this edited beat track is going to be for. And you're going to see throughout the throughout the rest of this video, this template's really set up for maximum efficiency and effectiveness, which is really going to be key whenever you're recording somebody, especially somebody who's freestyling, uh, going pretty fast. And you got to make sure that you're on point with your stuff. Uh, the next thing that we got is our vocal bus. And I promise we're going to break down all these plugins and all that stuff uh, here in a second. Now I'm just kind of walking you through exactly where everything's at. Uh, but the next thing you got is the vocal bus, then you go to your uh, 1176, which is some parallel compression. And then this is something pretty cool. I'm going to briefly kind of talk through this. I'm going to actually skip down here to the recording track because that's going to help you understand what's happening with, the, with this playlist track here. Uh, so what he typically does is instead of like recording on the lead vocal track, especially if you, you know, if you're recording an artist who's moving pretty fast, you really don't have time to drag and like, you know, zoom in. Normally what they, what I've noticed that, that Baines does within his tracks is he actually keeps a recording track. So literally every vocal that's recorded is going to be recorded on this track here. And then what he does, I'll kind of show you an example of what that looks like. So he'd be recording. And then after he gets done recording, he's going to bring it down. He's going to record again. He's going to bring it down here to your lead B. Then he's gonna come down here and record here. Bam. And then he drink, brings it down. You see how efficient that is? You know, he's not having to come over here and arm was track he needs to record. You literally just keep that one armed and then you can record super effective and super efficient that way. And let me show you what's happening here with this playlist track uh, real fast. Whenever they're recording, say he doesn't quite nail the take or, you know, this is a potential take. Instead of making a playlist track all the way down here and having to drag, you know, potential takes all the way down here, basically what he's done is he's created this playlist track up here to save potential takes. So say it's like, oh, uh, probably may not use that take. Uh, we may come back to it. Bam. Uh, we're back recording. Potential take. Bam. So say, you know, in the middle of recording, they want to go back to take number three. Oh, or take take number one in this scenario. Well, bam, there you go. And that's really what ha is happening within that playlist track. It's just kind of keeping the, uh, you know, potential takes for uh, quick and easy access. And then obviously down here, you know, your lead A, lead B, lead C, your ad lib tracks, those are pretty self-explanatory. And then you got your verb throw, A, B, and C. So say, hey, on this specific vocal, you know, on this specific part of the track, I really want like a burst of reverb. Bam. Bam. Bada bop boom. Well, you just kind of drag that down here to the to the reverb throw and you got it. This is just kind of another recording template hack that they use so they can quickly and effectively get a pretty close to a final mix sound 
within the recording session. And then we move down here to the plate hall and room, which is obviously going to be your reverbs. And then you obviously come down here and this is going to be your delays. And these are all working as sins up here on the vocal bus. And that's going to lead us into actually breaking down what is happening as far as plugins within this template. The heavy lifting for all the plugins are going to be coming from the vocal bus real fast. Um, you can kind of go through what's on the beat. Basically, he typically has a pro EQ, a fat filter pro Q3 up here on the beat. So say like the, you know, the kicks hitting a little bit too hard. You can conduct that real fast. You know, if the hi hats are hitting too, um, too loud, whatever the case may be, you know, he can duck that down uh, really fast. And then you obviously got the auto key, which is an Antares plugin. You know, what you can do is as you have that on there, you'll find the key of the beat. Uh, you just say send auto tune and it automatically shoots over the, the key of the beat to your auto tune. And real fast on the master bus, I've just got the Fat Filter Pro L2. You know, this can kind of, you can kind of interchange this. This wasn't super consistent over the interviews that I've seen. You know, that kind of changed from time to time. But you, you probably just want some kind of limiter to kind of boost the, the volume back up after you get done recording. So cool. Let's go ahead and break down what's on the vocal bus, the sauce, the stuff that you've probably been waiting for. Let's go ahead and kind of break down what's happening here. I'll drop these links to get these plugins down in the description if you want to check them out. Or, you know, if you're on the come up, you may not have these exact plugins. You can definitely still mimic this exact template. I would just recommend, you know, kind of using what you have. You know, if you may not have a big budget to get all these plugins, you can still make it work. You can just kind of copy, you know, what's happening here. And the last thing that I will say before we dive into the plugins, this is their recording chain. Things definitely change a little bit. Whenever he starts to mix, uh, he kind of breaks that down a little bit in the Avid interview that I've got linked down below. But as far as the recording chain, this is very consistent uh, across all the interviews that I watched. Uh, so let's go through the vocal chain real fast. We start off with the Fad Filter Pro Q3. It looks like he's just kind of taking off some of the uh, low frequencies down here to take out the room tone. You know, taking out a little bit of muds, taking out some of the Pearson frequencies up here. Not really doing too, too much. Just kind of cleaning up the vocal there. And then that moves us to the Fad Filter Pro D. S just kind of taking out some of the sibilant frequencies, taming that vocal a little bit. And then that leads us into the uh, the Waves R Comp Compressor. So basically what this is doing, fast attack, uh, medium release, and you can see the, the ratio uh, isn't too crazy. So basically it looks like what this is doing is just making the vocal a little bit more consistent. And then that leads us into the Novel Tech. Uh, this is a plug-in alliance plug-in, a Novel Tech vocal enhancer. So basically what this is doing is just kind of enhancing different uh, frequencies of the vocal. I believe it's kind of like a little bit of saturation maybe is kind of what I heard whenever I was playing it back. So he had this on pretty much all of his recording templates and all the interviews that I've seen. So if you don't have this specific plugin, I'll be honest, I'm not quite sure of another plugin that kind of does this exact same thing, but you can check it out at Plugin Alliance if having this identical template is something you want to do. And then that leads us right into the Mag EQ4, which is another Plugin Alliance plugin. So it looks like he's just kind of boosting a little bit up here, which is about 650 hertz. He's boosting a little bit at 2.5K. And then uh, adding a little bit of air to the top end up here looks at about 10K. Whenever I was running my vocals through this template, it just kind of lifting the vocal up a little bit and kind of making the vocal pop. And then that leads us into another plugin alliance plugin which is the purple audio mc77 a little bit more compression to kind of make that vocal more consistent i do feel like this brings out the vocal a little bit there i did notice too and with this setting it is going to make your vocals a little bit louder so if you need to adjust it you would just kind of adjust the output knob and then the last thing on the vocal bus is going to be the waves rvox compressor and i believe this was uh set down a little bit more I think I, I kind of tweaked this whenever I was uh, adjusting the template according to my specific vocals but I believe that's about where it lives it'll be perfect within the template you know if you end up download the template it's totally free template you know if you miss that part of the video down in the description all that's going to be identical to uh, to Bane's settings so literally all this Arvox is doing uh, what it sounds like to me is just kind of solidifying the vocal bringing it forward just a little bit to, to make that vocal pop in the mix and yeah it doesn't really look like too too much is happening there making making a little bit more consistent making a little bit more solid so bam bam bada bop boom let's go through the sins so this is a side chain compressor uh let's come back to that 
And the reason why is because that's going to be uh, relevant to a plugin down here that we haven't got to yet. Uh, so let's kind of skip that. We'll come back to it, I promise. So the next in that we got here is 1176, which is this, which is going to be some parallel compression, which is going to be the Waves uh, CLA 76. So basically what this is going to be doing is going to be heavy compression. And, you know, if you don't know about parallel compression, basically you're just compressing that lead vocal signal like crazy and blending that thing back in to kind of make that vocal kind of pop a little bit, giving it that warm, you know, punchy sound. So that's kind of what's happening there with the parallel compression. That's a really good setting. I typically wasn't adjusting this at all. Like that kind of lives there how it is. And then you got your half note delay, which is going to be down here. Looks like it's an echo boy. Nothing crazy really happening here. Just a little bit of low cut, a little bit of high cut. And it's just, you know, your half note delay. We got that turned down a good bit because, I mean, if you crank a half note delay, those echoes are going to be all over the place uh, clashing with your, with your vocals for sure. So we got that turned down a good bit. And then that leads us into some of the reverb settings. This is definitely going to change from track to track. In the template, you're probably going to see these are going to be a little bit more moderate in this specific track that I've got pulled up here and that I'm demoing the template on. Really just dial them to taste to, to however you want your vocals to sound within the mix because obviously that's going to change for, for every single song. What is going to stay consistent is the plugins that you know he was utilizing within the templates. So it looks like for the plate reverb, he's just got the Waves R verb. Uh, I believe it's just going to be the, the default plate reverb, the plate one. Yes, it is. That's what that's looking like. That's what the plate reverb is going to be. And then we've got the quarter note echo or delay, which is going to be another echo boy. Very similar settings to the to the half note. As you can see, there is some more plugins here on the quarter note. And the reason why is because I noticed in his templates, uh, he does have this turned up a little bit more with it being a, a quarter note, just kind of adding a little bit of juice to the lead vocals. But what he does have down here is he's compressing this echo pretty good. But what he has here is he's got it side chained up here. And the reason why he's got it side chained, I'm not going to go through, you know, all that stuff. That's not the goal of this video. The goal is to get you Banes and Young Thugs recording template. Uh, but basically what that side chain is going to do, whenever this vocal is going, it's going to say, hey, whenever this lead vocal pops in that quarter note delay needs to drop out so that's basically what that is doing that's going to all be set within the free template that you're going to get access to and then he's got a s1 m a waves s1 imager just kind of making that uh, delay uh, stand out a little bit and then it looks like he did uh, keep a plate on here to give it a little bit of juice a little bit of sauce a little bit of reverb on that fourth on the quarter note and then from there we're going to a hall reverb once again, just kind of set it to your taste. This is going to be the Valhalla Vintage Verb. Very close to the default setting. I think the only thing that changed was the decay time was brought down to about 2.5. That's what's happening with the Hall uh, Reverb. And then you got the Room Reverb, which is a really... Uh, I don't think there's hardly any decay time. So, I mean, this is a really kind of just in-your-face reverb, really short reverb. And uh, that's just kind of giving that vocal a little bit of room, a little bit of space. So, yeah, that kind of covers the vocal bus. And then to the final things that I noticed within his templates are going to be he does have sins on each one of these audio tracks. You know, if you want to add a little bit more echo on this specific part, it's easily accessible on the send here on the actual audio track. If you need this part to have a little bit more reverb, you can easily add it there. And then down here in the, in the reverb throws, it looks like he has the, he would typically use this Manny verb, and then he had a Manny uh, echo down here for a little bit of juice. Here, this isn't going to be in the template. This is just something that I specifically added on the track that I'm about to play for you so you can kind of get an idea of what the, what the template sounds like. Let's play a track uh, that I've got here. So you can kind of see exactly what this template is going to sound like. So as you can tell, that is sounding pretty solid for a recording template. This is definitely a little bit more complex recording template if you're just getting going within Pro Tools, which is exactly why I wanted to kind of hop on here and give you a breakdown of exactly what is happening within this template. This is still a little bit over your head, you know, if you don't quite understand sins and different things like that. 
Uh, one of the things that I would probably recommend is checking out a brand new training that I just released, which is called Record Radio Ready Vocals in Pro Tools in 60 Minutes or a little bit less than a Chick-fil-A combo. But with that being said, hopefully this added a little bit of value to you. Hopefully you feel a little bit more confident to start recording some nice Young Thug Gunna inspired vocals within Pro Tools. And don't forget, if you want to download this free template, I've included all that stuff all that material this free download right down in the description all you got to do click that link it'll show you my page to where you can download the template just put zero for how much you want to pay for it you know if you want me to give me a tip you know I'll, i'm happily accepting tips as well but it just put in zero you'll get your free download and you will be rocking and rolling within pro tools you just have to update your inputs and outputs and you'll be good to go but hey that does it for this video i'm checking out we'll catch you guys soon peace